I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasandram. In this quick video, I will discuss a few important clinically relevant points about caffeine use in apnea of prematurity. So the CAP trial which was recently published a few years ago, now the follow-up uh, data has been available for uh, even the 4 year and the 11 year stages. So uh, Dr. Barbara Schmidt uh, from uh, Canada uh, was the uh, chief investigator and this study has been widely acclaimed. The reason they did the study was to make sure that the caffeine was safe to use in the premature babies but it ended up showing uh, results which favored caffeine both for the lung as well as the neurodevelopment. So people started thinking it's a brain uh, favoring drug while actually Dr. Barbara Schmidt clearly states in her own lectures as well that it's a lung uh, protective effect in terms of reducing the apnea, uh, helping the baby come off the respiratory support earlier, reducing the incidence of apnea, causing uh, the reduction in hypoxemic episodes. So it doesn't have a direct impact on the brain itself. So the main aspects of caffeine that have changed recently is to start it very early, even in babies who may not extubate. So there are studies which have looked at whether it is necessary to do that it's no clear not clear most of the babies are being extubated early due to our aggressive management many of them may not give uh, get intubated we may give the surfactant by less invasive methods so it's true that the caffeine is being given on day one and many of the babies need it on day one the babies who are very tiny 22 week 23 weeks uh, where you don't expect them to be extubated for a week or two uh, there is really no evidence to show that starting caffeine is necessary in the acute phase. So my practice is uh, to decide based on the likelihood of extubation. If the baby has lower uh, ventilatory requirements, it's fully justified. If a baby is not likely to extubate in the next few days, better to uh, give the caffeine a couple of days before you extubate the baby because we don't know for sure in the extreme preterm babies whether uh, the loading dose of caffeine may have a negative effect. Uh, of course, if the baby is going to be extubated, you need the benefit, so the risk benefit will be balanced. Uh, the dose of caffeine that is to be given, again, uh, many people are starting to use very high doses without clear evidence. And this again is uh, clearly uh, uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Barbara Smith that it's not the ideal practice because the evidence to support uh, the uh, dose of caffeine, uh, the high dose of caffeine is not very clear. So the loading dose of uh, 20 milligram per kilogram is widely accepted. Going up to 40 milligram per kilogram can be considered but it's not absolutely safe. The maintenance dose, the range can be 5 to 10 milligram per kilogram. My practice is to start with 10 milligram per kilogram in the babies under 28 weeks and after the first 4-5 days when they are stable, I reduce it to 5 milligram per kilogram and then I don't necessarily increase the dose of, uh, on a very strict basis but when they grow fast, we increase it. Uh, the third question that comes up uh, for the more uh, the bigger babies I just give a 5 milligram per kilo maintenance I very very rarely give uh, 40 milligram uh, loading dose only 20 milligram per kg loading dose followed by 10 milligram per kg maintenance dose in the babies under 28 weeks and a 5 milligram per kg maintenance dose in the babies over 28 28 and above in some of these babies who have the shallow breathing we may give an additional 10 milligram uh, dose or change it to a 10 milligram per kilogram dose for maintenance for a few days. The next question that comes up is when to stop the caffeine. Obviously we continue the caffeine at least till 32 to 33 weeks in a baby who is on caffeine. In babies with chronic lung disease who are on respiratory support or high flow nasal cannula I tend to keep the caffeine till they are weaning off quickly and uh, in the uh, babies who uh, are otherwise stable by 33 34 weeks we stop the caffeine i don't wait till the absolute mark of 34 weeks we want at least one week of apnea free period before we stop the caffeine we want uh, at least one week after we stop the caffeine for the baby to go home so these two rules uh, we have to balance as well and in the babies with chronic lung disease it's not uncommon to keep the caffeine till 37 38 weeks in some of the babies who are still on cpap or uh, high flow nasal cannula at a higher flow so uh, these are the important points uh, that I would like to make about caffeine. 
so it's a fairly safe drug you don't need drug level monitoring it is slightly on the more expensive side especially the intravenous caffeine one of the things to remember about the dose is uh, we should remember that the caffeine citrate dose is different from the caffeine uh, base dose so caffeine uh, citrate or the caffeine salt dose is uh, the what we normally talk about for the 5 and 10 milligram maintenance and the 20 milligram loading if it is a caffeine base it should be half of that dose and uh, aminophilin or theophylline is not uh, used in apnea prematurity in most centers anymore because of their uh, lower therapeutic index and also the need for drug level monitoring caffeine has taken over in uh, most of these situations uh, just for interest i mean the mechanism of action of caffeine uh, obviously is discussed in my video on apnea of prematurity and i would refer you to watch that as well i hope uh, this short video is useful about the practical aspects of caffeine use uh, we can give iv caffeine of course in the acute phase and oral caffeine once the baby is on oral uh, medication if you have to hold the caffeine uh, for any reason for up to four days or so you don't need to repeat the loading dose but if you have held for more than four days it's better to give a loading dose in view of the therapeutic uh, levels uh, dropping i hope uh, this video is helpful please do share thank you